big event. Uh, so the CN incident. The civilians of the Kuomintang's inner circle have led to a precarious situation. Their leader, Chen Jiexie, uh, or Chen Kai-shek, has been detained by General Zhang Xueliang and General Yang Hucheng in an effort to force them to accept the truth of us to unite China against foreign enemies. This is a golden opportunity for us to ensure that China does not fall into the hands of the foreign imperialists. So this makes us... Uh, lose hostility with uh, the Republic of China and the official creation of the Second United Front uh, begins. And uh, so this is the cooperation between the Chinese Communists and the Chinese Nationalists against the the Japanese and as you can see the North, Northwestern or sorry Northeastern Army is annexed into ROC because Zhang Shuilang got all that he wanted and um, also because he's arrested now uh, so basically what happens is after the CN incident because uh, CN is over here basically what happened is um, Zhang, Zhang Shuiliang invites Chiang Kai-shek and Chiang Kai-shek arrives then Zhang Shuiliang remember this is the territory where troops that are loyal to him are not where troops that are loyal to Chiang Kai-shek are despite this being the same country so he orders Chiang Kai-shek arrested and Chiang Kai-shek can only be released if he makes the United Front. He makes the United Front but then is like, yo, Zhang Shui Liang, you're a, a dick, you, are, you arrested me and he arrests Zhang Shui Liang. Which is, uh, yeah, it's just the best, isn't it? Anyway, uh, we've got artillery. Let's build some artillery. That does not sound like the worst idea in the world, now does it? Um, God damn it. We need our, our stability to increase so that we can get limited exports. Because, well, yes, free trade is good, like research speed factor, I put blah, 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 blah. Right now, we don't fucking need those things. What we need is resources. So, yeah, and we need to not, not obviously not have inflation, so. We need our stability to be up and we need our inflation to be down. Oh, and we can recover from the long march further. This is, as you can see, quite important. Uh, now, fucking Nisha Mak, like as you can see, I hate this shit because it's minus 40. Minus fucking 40. Uh, wait, we can propagand. Insane. Look at that. We need, we need the opinions to be at minus 50. We need the opinions to be at minus 50. But the game being the total fucking Nazi that he is knows that you're gonna be at minus 10 not at minus 20 <sighs> so it's just to make you do it twice to get the border war now oh my god they keep getting these focuses they keep getting these motherfucking focuses see if they had just taken fucking retain the affiliation with the Gomendang would give me minus opinion. And we would have enough. So we're just gonna be waiting for that. And uh, in the meantime, we're building up our troops. We're up to 20, 24 width. Um, objective is to get to 30 width, at the very least. Um, but to do that, we're gonna need more guns. Oh, we have 500, good. Uh, 30 width of just... Um, Infantry and then try to see if we can get some artillery in there. If not, we're just gonna get the artillery to be support artillery uh, How much would it be? We need uh, 72 towed artillery to uh, Equip all of our divisions with artillery and for now We're just gonna keep these six divisions and uh, see how it goes because right now again our, ter our territory is so like small that uh, I feel like Bigger and better divisions are much more important than more divisions because that's just how Hearts of Iron 4 tends to work a lot of the time. So yeah, that's um, that's some good stuff. And uh, our supply situation is uh, going up now because uh, our stability has gone up. So that's quite good. And uh, that is... Uh, Still not like the best, but it's going up, which is good. And uh, as a whole, events are moving forward in, um, yeah, as you can see. Here they go, where we're trying to. Um, so 
that will start a war with the Republic of China, but we're not actually in like a faction with them. So it's only gonna start a war with the Republic of China, which means that we're still not gonna be involved in the war. To get involved in the war, you need to join the War of Resistance, take this focus. And so that's what we're going to do at some point. But first, we're just gonna strengthen ourselves as much as possible. Like, like that war coming, I just can't fucking afford. Man, it's because this is only them. Well, this is only us. God damn it. It's okay, though. We're close. We just need... 10 more political power there. And we can take that, and we do that, and then we can initiate the border war. And I think this time we're definitely going to win. Uh, also, um, let's take the Type 81 Carbine. Not that we want to produce it yet because we want to have more guns and so having the older guns is fine fucking Poland um, right and we're gonna wait until we have the 75 political power fucking Hungary uh, 75 political power to do this and after we have the 75 political power to do this I am gonna take strategic planning although actually might be a good idea to wait because how long will that take yeah 60 more days oh no okay 60 more days 50 days we have enough time to then later think about joining the war of resistance good and uh, of course Xinjiang being the little bitches that they are are going to declare a war on Tunganistan because they get war goals to do a whole bunch of shit. Uh, they went to befriend the Soviets, which is what they almost always do. But wait, hold on. Oh yeah, right, they can also befriend China, apparently. Um, and uh, from there, they can either rec uh, recognize us or block us. So, yeah. In any case, these people are not... Like, not fun, because uh, the Soviet Union is supporting them f by uh, supporting essentially because of opportunism. Uh, they're, you know, bordering, and Chiang uh, Shatsai wants relations with, uh, obviously, the USSR. And so he kind of, you know, makes overtours to the Soviet Union or whatever. But uh, the Chinese Soviet Republic is like, yo, yo, motherfucker, this guy is not cool. Uh, you should support us instead, but obviously he can't support us because we're in the middle of fucking nowhere and we're a little bit too nationalist for his tastes. Uh, in fact, later on we're gonna get to pick the conference of the Soviet regions uh, to decide essentially what we're gonna be doing with our lives. Um, and there's some interesting options that we're gonna get to it when the time comes uh, so that you can uh, help me choose which one. Well, in fact, we don't really have anything. Oh shit. Can do the insultations. So there we go. Now, hello, I've insulted you. Okay, now their opinion of us is minus 70. And once the propaganda is over, our opinion of theirs is going to be minus 70, which means that we can start the border war if we have 50 political power, which we will. Good. Um, and again, I feel like this border war we're going to pretty much easily win because our divisions are just so much superior now. Uh, in fact, would we have enough time to get this extra guy? Maybe. Maybe, maybe, maybe. And, um... Yeah, yeah, we definitely do, because you're gonna see it's just retarded. Um, I feel like feed the peasants is not a bad proposition. Yeah, like... Feeding people sounds pretty decent. Yeah, let's do that. There we go. This is unfortunately going to lower our... Poli let's not feed the peasants. We need more political power. Um, yeah, okay. So now we should have... Yeah, we just need enough political power. So uh, now that we don't have nothing to do, but soon we will, uh, let's actually check out the political options that we can take for later. So either open up the supply line, um, which uh, 
you know, requires us to have defeated the Ninxia Maklek. Now, this is what Zhang Guotao was proposing. Now, Zhang Guotao was the main rival of Mao Zedong during the uh, sort of long march period uh, within the CPC. Oh, shit. Yes, let's go. And... Um, Basically, he was pro-Soviet. He um, he believed that right now, you know, the, the task of the CPC should be to get help from the Soviet Union as much as possible. While Mao Zedong was more nationalist and was like, we need to do things in our own way to get more independence from the Soviet Union. Uh, this chance through actually a little bit later on in the history of the PRC. So that's open up the supply line uh, with the Soviets. So basically, his whole plan was to move northwest as much as possible. Uh, in fact, even in uh, when they were uh, when the Chinese communists were making the long march, and when they're in a place called Sunyi, uh, who, which I can't pinpoint on the map, but it's somewhere around here, uh, they made this conference deciding where to go. So Mao was for moving to Yan'an, which is where they eventually went to, you know, defend against the nationalists. While Zhang Guotao wanted to move northwest to, again, open up the supply route to the Soviet Union, to the Soviet border. And uh, that's that. And he leads to a military junta, which is fine. Um, there we go. I don't think you need more political power later on, so let's actually get that that factory output, because it sounds really useful. And, uh, yeah, so that's essentially, um, Zhang Guotao. Uh, then, and he leads to war communism, um, and military dictatorship, which founds a new nation, but that's, it's gonna be for later. And here comes the Marco Polo Bridge incident, which is relatively important. Uh, the Maoist route is the CCP first, which... And then obviously gives you socialism with Chinese characteristics, which is a little bit of an early name drop. Fall of Shanghai. Uh, then rectification movement, which is something that happened over there. And you can still, I believe... No, no, no. Okay, no. So there you can either do re republicanism or republicanism. Uh, <laughs> uh, and uh, that leads to... That leads to either centralization democratic centralism, which is centralization, uh, and then either a new nation or for the Soviets, which, you know, the Chinese Soviet Republic will be restored or the People's Republic of China, which is the historical route. Then federalism comes from either expanding the United Front, aka having, uh, you know, a more, uh, it's Wang Ming, so having a more sort of open to the Kuomintang left wing kind of thing. And uh, that leads to, again, either federalism or republicanism. Which might lead you to the Federal Republic of China. The Federal Republic of China can also be had if you go with Trotskists. Rethink Trotskism. And then you get Peng Shuzhi, who I have never heard of. So, yeah. That's some fun stuff. And uh, now we have uh, research bonuses for defense and death. Amazing. And yeah, so now the War of Resistance has begun. Well, not a War of Resistance yet for us, but uh, definitely the second Sino-Japanese War. So uh, let's hope that, you know, Chiang Kai-shek does not die too fast. Okay, and now we can also escalate the border conflict, which is really fucking opportunistic of us because the Ninxia Maklik is in the United Front and it's fighting the Japanese. So we're going to be getting territory for free, essentially, from people that, you know, are fighting the Japanese. Uh, don't ask the moral questions. There we go. Let's also get some support equipment in there. Um, so that we can eventually get engineers and things like that. That just sounds quite useful. Oh. And, um, yeah, we might just get it for free because they might just have all their units... The, the, the units that might be participating in the border war for them might just be coming from, like, the front line, so, yeah. So we should be able to occupy Ninxia relatively easily. And uh, even if they come in, which they can't, when they will, uh, they're gonna have less 
um, less organization, and their troops are going to be definitely inferior to our own this time. As you can see, the attack values are much more in our favor this time. Much more in our favor, which is obviously quite nice. Declare war on the Kumul Khanate, of course. And now that he has joined the battle, it should be relatively easy to beat him and win the border war. Okay. Now we can join the war of resistance, but we might want to wait a little bit longer. Oh, yo! Yan Shan fucking instantly collapsed. That's not fun stuff, man. That's absolutely not fun stuff. So, yeah. We need to join the war of resistance. Absolutely. She's gonna give us more divisions. And uh, we're gonna put our existing divisions on this border. Because, uh, yeah. Come on, just finish him off. Of course, it's gonna take forever and be a bitch. I just wish that you could use the, you know, uh, fingy things. Whatchamacallits. Oh shit, we need to escalate the conflict, but that's expensive as fuck. Uh, I wish that you could use the thingy things, and by thingy things, I mean... Oh, yo, what the fuck is that? Oh, that's North Shanxi Autonomous Government. Of, of course. Um, by thingy things, I mean uh, unit abilities. Oh, but the combat whiff went up, but then it went bent down. Damn it. The commander abilities. It, they would just be so fucking useful right now. Because they keep pouring more troops back in, back in and that's not fun. Because, you know, our guys are winning, but they're not winning enough. And if we could just fucking use an ability like Force Attack, we'd just instantly demolish these people really easily. And apparently we won. N not fucking sure how, but we got it. Ladies and gentlemen, we got it. So, we're gonna amass local communist support thing, whatever. And, um... Now, we're gonna get working on the United Front business. Because this might be bad. Might be very, very bad. We need to join as quickly as fucking possible. As quickly as motherfucking possible. And, uh, you know... Help out our buddies. Oh my god. This is not looking good. It's really not looking good. Alright. We're just gonna keep our good troops just kind of doing what they're doing. Now, these Japanese have, they have better divisions, which is bad. Xinjiang is being a little bitch. Understandably. Uh, but now that we have Ningxia, we have extra factories, actually. Which is quite useful. I like having more factories. Let's get more of those. Let us get more of those. And uh, now we want to save up as much poly power as possible to get uh, military leaders, because otherwise we're just going to get fucked by the Japanese. And um, joining the War of Resistance is going to give us more divisions. Uh, at least it says so. We will receive 10 divisions from Soviet. I am not 100% sure that this is going to be the case. If things go bad, we can just fucking retreat back to Yan'an and this adjacent province because they have forts. Or at least these three provinces down. Because they have forts, and so we can defend them relatively easily, and it's mountains, and, you know, they're not gonna like it. That's... that's about it. Uh, thankfully, we do have the entrenchments. Entrenchments are fun. And I wonder what that partisan thing... Oh, that's, uh, that, be that makes it become a core state. Okay, interesting. Because, uh, we don't have cores on everything in China. Only on a few things. So that's good. And, uh, yeah, the Japanese, hopefully, they're gonna get kind of cucked by some of their issues. 
Oh, and uh, looks like um, Shanxi is making a bit of a comeback. Provisional government of the ROC established. That's uh, one of the puppet regimes. Great Wave government established. That's also another puppet regime. That's This one, though, is only in Shanghai. While the provisional government was supposed to take over everything. And uh, once we're at war with, J with the Japanese, we can also take... Partisans Offensive, which uh, allows us to make infiltrations in enemy territory, which is fun and Not something I've ever tried to do Oh, there we go. We're now at war with the Japanese, uh, but like this is it, like it's kind of weird You know, you'd think that that mechanic would be used more, but it isn't I don't know uh, anyway Where are my Soviet divisions? Oh, yo we can do some. We can do like the big dick plays. Look at that. That's big dick plays right there. Oh, but it's not really that big dick plays, actually. Anyway, like our divisions are not the worst. And ooh, there's no more no way out. Good, because we're now in a faction, I guess. Um, we can do war propaganda. Uh, for war support, but yeah, that's fine. That's fine, we're gonna get extra war support soon. You know, what I'm really thinking is weird is, where the fuck are my 10 Soviet divisions? You know, that you promised me? Okay, let's, let's get more divisions of our own, I guess. I guess. This has uh, pissed off everyone. Oh, that does not give the territory to me. Okay, whatever. Fine. Uh, the reason I want to do this big dick play is that the nationalists are coming in from Taiwan. So, yeah, perhaps doing the big dick plays would be a good idea. To um, allow ourselves to help encircle these guys. And uh, we're gonna get. Um... Oh, and now we're called the Shanganing Border Region, and we have the nationalist flag because we're technically back in the in the nationalists. There we go. Raise communist support. Excellent. And uh, now we can take the partisan offensive. Nice. And we can also take the conference of the Soviet regions because. Um... Because we have done everything that we needed to. And we can also apparently strike east, which begins a border war with the Shanxi Click. I don't understand how that's supposed to happen, but that's fine. Uh, we're gonna start to create the Soviet fortress, essentially. Again, it would have been fucking nice to have those 10 Soviet divisions. Not even gonna think about that. Uh, but yeah, this means that we're gonna need to produce a lot of fucking guns. Which means that we need steel. Which means that we don't build civilian factories anymore. We get steel for our guns. 